Hello everybody, how are you doing? Uh, today is a very special day for me and I wanted to get on here and share that with you and talk a little bit about it. Um, it was brought to my attention that 10 years ago today, I uploaded my very first YouTube video for RJB Woodturner. That's kind of uh, a lot to take in. I mean, 10 years of making videos. I honestly don't know how many more years I have in me uh, to where I'll continue to make videos. For now, I'm good. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's been a roller coaster ride. Those of you who've been with me for a long time know that uh, I've had my ups and downs and I've had areas where I loaded a ton of videos and areas where there were almost no video. Um, it, so it's been, it's been a wild ride, but it's been a good ride. You know, uh, I tell a little bit about the story. Um, I'll tell two stories here that actually kind of play in together. Uh, the very first time I ever turned on a lathe, I was in sixth grade. It was my sixth grade shop class. And uh, the way I ended up in shop is I took a typing class. And I know that sounds a little crazy, but some of you have heard this story before. Five, six days into the typing class, the principal came to the, to the room, knocked on the door, spoke to the teacher for a moment, and she pointed to me, and there were a couple of other boys in there, maybe four, maybe five of us total, I don't remember. And um, <clears throat> the teacher asked us to go with the principal. And I thought I was in trouble, you know, so in my mind, I'm thinking, what did I do? You know, I, I didn't do anything. I, I couldn't think of anything at all that I did wrong. So I was really kind of nervous, you know, sweating bullets. And we're walking down the hall, and one of the boys said something to the principal about what are we doing? And he said, well, boys don't need to learn how to type. So we ended up getting put in a shop class. Now I can build you one heck of a coffee table, but I can't type to save my soul. Now, flash forward to actually about, I think it was uh, maybe 2011. My wife and I were driving down the road and uh, there was a garage sale and we decided to stop. They had stuff, the yard was just packed with stuff. I mean, I've never seen a garage sale so big. So my wife and I stopped. And it was really a nice house. It was in a hilly part of town. So as I'm walking up the driveway, there's this big hill on the right-hand side. And laying there in a box is an old Craftsman tube lathe. And it's in pieces. I mean, the motor's in there. Tons and tons of pieces in there. Maybe about half a dozen tools. And the guy had 25 bucks on the box. So I asked him, does it run? He goes, yeah, yeah, the motor will start up. You know, we took it apart to work on it. Just never put it back together. So I was like, well, I'm taking a big chance here. I, I don't even, I don't know anything about it. I don't know if the parts are there. Would you take 20 bucks for it? And the guy said, sure. So I hauled this box back to my house and uh, I started putting it back together. And it took me a while to figure it out. There were a couple of missing pieces, but thankfully, you know, eBay is a great resource for that. And I was able to, um, to go out and find the pieces that I needed. I started turning just different things. I was trying vases and bowls and I wasn't very good at it because number one, I really didn't have the right tools. Number two, the tools I had weren't sharp. And number three, I hadn't turned since shop class and I really only turned one thing in shop class. And I had a teacher there telling me what to do while I did it. So it was pretty easy. Here, I, I had no experience. I was kind of watching some videos trying to learn and that took a while. But uh, as I'm turning videos, uh, the same year, I got involved with Laney Shaughnessy over at the uh, United uh, Federation of Woodworkers, UFOWW, which is where my email address comes from, UFOWW. Um, <clears throat> and Laney had a, a kind of a, a, a bulletin board where people could post questions about woodworking and you would answer them. And I, I by this time, I had learned a little bit about wood turning and I knew a lot about of other types of woodworking. Scroll sawing was huge for me, um, you know, just different types of woodworking. So I did a little carving. So I was answering questions and I, I got to where I answered quite a few questions to the point where Laney and I kind of started communicating. And uh, he at the time was doing woodworking videos on YouTube. So he, he told me, he said, hey, you should try it. You should give a woodworking video a try or a wood turning video a try. So I did. <laughs> and 10 years ago, this is Laney's fault. And he won't watch this video because I don't think he uh, watches YouTube much anymore. But um, it's his fault that I started the channel. He suggested it, I did it, and we went from that, what I just told you, a, a, a bunch of parts in a box, and we're, we're looking at uh, one, two, three, four, I think five lathes later. <laughs> you know, that's a lot of, I mean, a lot has happened. Uh, this is my second shop. I was in my garage at the other house 
and I was supposed to be sharing it with the cars, but there was so much junk in there, couldn't get the cars in. Now I've got my own dedicated space that uh, is just for you know what I do, wood turning, scroll sawing, any type of woodworking I do. This is, this is my playroom, and um, so many of you have been with me for a long time, and I, and I thank you for that. Uh, a lot has changed in the shop. Uh, I have I have grown my channel to where I do get a little bit of income from it. It's not a lot, but you know you can go out on Social Blade and check that out and see exactly what I make if you're interested. I started a second YouTube channel called What You Do in Bob, and What You Do in Bob has been my shop vlog channel. Uh, so I tried to keep those things separate. I kind of did a little bit out on the main channel for a while, and I thought, nah, it's getting too convoluted. So I split it off into a second channel, and uh, the the woodworking update videos that I do have been relatively popular. I have a pretty good following over there, um, but they don't really get a lot of views and they take a lot of time to do. So I'm going to kind of morph away from that for a while. Uh, I'm starting to delve more back into my metal detecting. I, I did that for years. Uh, my dad likes to metal detect. He and I go a lot. A good buddy of mine who 25 years ago when I bought my metal detector, I bought it because my buddy had one and we were hanging out. So I bought a metal detector so he and I could go detecting. And then he got out of it a couple of two, maybe three years later, and I had nobody to detect with. Well, he called me up a while back, and guess what? He bought another one, and he wants to get back into detecting. So we're going to start doing some of that. Now, my detector being 25 years old, I'm telling you just a lot of stories in this video. My detector being 25 years old, uh, it's a single frequency detector. I want to move up to a multi-frequency detector. And uh, I was talking with my wife the other day, and I thought, you know, instead of me going out and just buying a detector... Why don't I do 8, 10, 12 videos about metal detecting and kind of morph what you do in Bob into sort of let it be about metal detecting for a while. And then I can buy a metal detector. So we're going to do that. We're going to, we're going to detect for a while, uh, buy a new detector, and I'll see how that goes. And I may morph that channel more into one of my other hobbies. And I'm moving away from the woodworking updates because, um, you know, you, they may seem very simple because it's just shot here, shot there. But you have to stop, you have to set up, you have to take the shot, you have to upload the video, you have to edit the video. It's a lot of work that goes into them to get 250, 300 hits on a video. There's a lot of time. So it, honestly, you have to kind of weigh, is it worth my time to do? And it's really not. And if you go to Social Blades, you'll understand why. That channel brings in almost no money. I, uh, so it's not really worth doing the effort or putting in the effort for it. So I'm going to morph that way for a while and kind of explore my other, one of my other hobbies. Um, if you're interested in keeping up with what's going in the shop, uh, I'm doing that on my, my Patreon channel. Uh, and I'm doing it there because it's instantaneous. I can pick up the camera, I can hit the button, and I can record a 15-second video and boom, upload it, and it's done. There's no additional work. And the people over there are really enjoying um, keeping up with what's going on in the shop. So I'm going to continue to do that. So now, most of you probably can't really do the Patreon thing. You don't really have, you know, extra money to put toward the channel to kind of help out. And, you know, I understand that. It's not a big deal. I'm still going to keep producing videos, the same content I've been producing uh, that you guys really seem to like. But other ways you can help me out is promote my videos, encourage other people, or share my videos on your social media so other people watch them. That will help the channel grow. Because after 10 years, I'm setting at 40,000 subscribers, which is not a lot of subscribers if you think about it. And of those 4,000, there are maybe 3,000 of you that are actually active. So <laughs> the other 37,000 uh, uh, people, I don't know what happened to them. They subscribed and they disappeared. But if you want to help the channel, that's a great way to help it. One thing I want to talk about here that is new, and I just last night, I'm sorry, I take that back. It was the night before I sat down and I made a little bit of a design. A couple of you guys helped me get my logo cleaned up a while back, and I appreciate that. Thank you so much. I took that design and I made a t-shirt logo, and uh, I'm over at Redbubble, and we're going to have RJB Woodturner t-shirts. Now, before you go to Redbubble and look me up and buy one of my shirts, I'm asking you to hold off for just a little bit. And the reason why, I did one shirt, one logo, and of course there's a dozen or so shirts you can pick, but I ordered one as soon as I, as soon as I made it. So let me get that in. It should be here in a couple of days. Uh, maybe, I think they said seven days or so. Um, 
let me get it and let me check the quality out. Make sure the t-shirt is decent quality. Make sure the logo is decent quality. And I'll show it here on the channel so that, you know, I don't want you guys to go out and buy it and I get it in and it's like, oh my gosh, this, this design is terrible. I don't want that. I want, if you guys are going to buy one, I want you to get a good one. So the t-shirts will be fun and there are going to be more than just one. If, if the quality is there, I'm going to do, I think there's about four, maybe five designs that I have in mind for the channel that I'll do. So there will be some selections. So you may even want to hold off a little bit until I pop a couple of the other designs up there. So you have a choice. Beyond that, you know, like I said, I really just want to say thank you to everyone who puts up with me each and every week. You come here, you watch my videos, you comment, you like, you guys have subscribed. Thank you for all of that. I truly appreciate it. And uh, anything you can do to help me grow the channel in the next couple of years will help. Um, if the channel is growing, I'm going to be more encouraged to, to do more. If the channel is not growing, I don't know. I may lean more towards another hobby. Who knows? I will be going to three shows this year. My first show is in Chicago. It is uh, later in April. I'll be going to the uh, uh, Music City Pin Turners Gathering. You can look that up. Uh, I'll put in the description. I'll put uh, the information I have in the description for those. And I'm going to the Mid Ohio Valley this year. Uh, next year we may. I'll try to keep it at about three. I may drop one this year and you know go to another one next year. Or if I really like all three of the shows this year, I may add a fourth one. I'm able to do that. I'm able to get out to different areas of the country and meet you guys, do a demo for you, hang out, talk, chat, and just have a great time. So um, even if even if I'm not going to be at the show, if there's a show anywhere in your, your area, please consider going to it. Um, you have no idea the benefit that you will get from attending one of these woodworking shows. Uh, it can be a pin show or it can be just a full on woodworking show. Uh, please consider going at least once. And I think what will happen is you will get hooked. You'll have a great time. You'll meet some great people who are like-minded. They're doing the same hobby as you. They're loving the hobby and they wanna talk about it. They wanna show, they wanna tell, they wanna have a great time. So this video went on longer than I thought. I just wanted to kind of talk and reminisce a little bit about uh, about what's what's been going on the last 10 years. Uh, I, I'm really blown away that uh, I'm still making videos and you're still watching after that length of time. Everybody, thank you so much. I truly appreciate you and want all of you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again real soon and have a great evening.